Pray that you would also, if there's, if there's any direction that you need to change in his message, that you would do so accordingly, Father God. We surrender today's message to you. Lord, give it great power. Give it great authority. Let it be your word for right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Good morning. Okay. All right. So um, it's so good to be here as usual. Uh, it's 11.43. Um, sometimes it takes longer time from the moment we start worshiping to the time the word starts. And if you're the preacher, you kind of get excited. And, and, and I usually, if you would feel my hand before I preach, they get cold. I don't know why. I, 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 we've been doing this for many years, and uh, I still get nervous. <laughs> so imagine that stress. They make you wait 30 minutes before they put you on the pulpit. <laughs> and it makes you want to go to the bathroom right before you start preaching. Amen. But I have to remind myself. <clears throat> I was praying this morning. I have to remind myself, and I think it's true for, for all the people who stand here at the front that I am not here, that we are not here to give you a talk, okay? We're not here, I'm not here this morning, speaking for myself, to um, give you an exciting Sunday morning. Um, I'm not here to make your Sunday morning going to the Sunday service worthy of uh, the gas and the time that you invest. Yeah? I'm not here to entertain ears. I'm here to convey to you what God has impressed in my heart. Amen? And in the process of that, um, you may like it. You may enjoy it. Yes? And you may not. Sometimes when God speaks and you hear the truth, at first it, it stings. But after that, it heals. It builds up. And it sets you, it sets us in the right direction. Amen? So this morning, I'd like to speak to you. I'd like to share to you an impression that I had um, uh, <clears throat> about uh, for, for this church, okay? Whenever we stand here, whenever we share the word, we always have the heart that by the word of God, it would move us to the right direction where God wants us to go, where God wants us to go. Amen. Yeah. As a church, as a dad, as a mom, as head of a family, as a student, as a young one, as a teenager, when you hear the Word of God on a Sunday morning, the purpose of which is to move you to where God wants you to go. Amen? It's not to gain knowledge. It's not for anything else other than having that something, a force, push you to the right direction. Amen? And I'm believing that this morning. I want to share to you uh, the title first of, of the message this morning is about awake, alive and awake. Okay, how many of you are alive and awake this morning? Yes. Alive and awake. Ooh, those are bold words. Those are big words. Okay, and I hope that you will stay awake for the next 30 minutes. And I hope that we can finish this in 30 minutes. Okay, because um, I know some of you have plans to go to Luby's or eat barbecue after this. Okay, but I want, I need, I just pray that God would bring us to the place of our identity in Him where we are alive and awake spiritually, okay? Yeah. We are called to be alive and awake spiritually. But before that, you know, uh, I think 28 years ago, June of 1987, it was my first day to step into a college school, okay? I spent many years going through elementary school, high school, and now that summer of June 1987, I stepped for the very first day um, in a college. Our university is called uh, Angeles University Foundation. Actually, that's not our foundation. I saw that picture on the internet. It looked good, so I put it there. That's not anybody you know. It's a person who's on her first day of college, and she's lost. Yeah? She doesn't know where to go. And same thing with me many years ago, 20 years ago. I knew my friends back in high school. I knew where to go. I know where my classroom is in high school. I knew my friends, my teachers. It was comfortable. But then 
things were getting real, I had to go to college. Okay? I was 17 years old, probably 16 years old. When I stepped into college, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where my room is. I, it's a lot of stress because there will be, you know, new faces that I'm going to see. People from different backgrounds. You know, in high school, we lived in the province. Okay? So I don't know about you here. When you're from the province, you're kind of a simple guy like, like me. So I was from the province. Okay? They, they weren't ignorant people. They were simple people. They weren't. They were, I would say, unadulterated. <laughs> Different from city guys, okay? So when I was going to college, I was so stressed because there, there were these people who um, I hear talking and they were, you know, their behavior was, for the first time I've seen that behavior in my life. It was a stress. And it was like, I felt like I did not belong there. I didn't belong there. And um, we went to college signing um, this, this week for my daughter, Elena. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, one of the, uh, the founder of the, the school, uh, Tom, Tom Tortellini. <laughs> Not Tortellini? Tor what? Tom. Torkelson. Okay. He said that when you go into college, when you first, when you step into college, sometimes you don't feel like you belong there and you want to go back to high school. You want to go back to mom and dad. But he encouraged the students that you make a, an agreement today that once you start, you're going to finish. Yeah. Amen. Why, why am I telling this story? It's the same thing when we, when we meet Jesus in our lives. We've been, we've been used to, we've used to walking our lives the way we knew how to walk our lives. We had our little bubble. We had our... A uh, small clique of friends. We had our routines. We had our thinking. Yeah. We had our relationships. We had our backgrounds. We had our culture, our own culture. Okay? And they were good. But then we meet Jesus, and then something changes. We are brought into this new light with Him, into this new relationship with Him. And then suddenly we feel like we don't belong here. Because everything's new, because everything that we hear now, everything that we're instructed to do is totally different from the way what we've learned before. I want to share this message this morning because we have seen, personally, I have seen people who come to the Lord, who, who went to this church, they, they, they made the decision to follow Jesus, but then after a few weeks, they feel like it's not for them. So they stop doing it, okay? They are made alive in Christ. Something gets quickened in their lives. Yet after that, because it's an unfamiliar thing, the, the senses does not connect. They, they, they stop doing it, amen? And I want to encourage all of us that no matter how things are not connecting with you right now, no matter how things aren't making sense for you right now, I encourage you to just keep following and keep following until it clicks, until you become aware of it, until you become totally, fully awake to the things that God has prepared for you and me. Amen. Imagine this student, a whole future, her whole future is ahead of the student, the college student for the first day. And if he felt like, I don't feel like going, I don't belong here, this is hard, it's a lot of stress, I don't know where to go, I don't know my teachers, these are new students, I quit. Then there goes the future, there goes the career, there goes the potential out of the window. Amen? Now let me read to you a verse in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 6. This is who we are, okay? And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Before we met Jesus... Let me just tell you who we were. We were dead. We were dead in our sins. Dead meaning you're separated. When you, when you say dead, it, it doesn't only mean you stop breathing. Death is separation. Okay? Whenever I do funerals, and I'm not endorsing this, okay? <laughs> Whenever I do funerals, I explain death as a separation because the body separates from the soul. 
Okay? So we were dead. We were separated from God who is life. And our spirits were dead. But when we got saved, when we got born again, we were made alive. Okay? So let's keep reading. He made you alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead in our sins. Okay? In which you once walked according to the course of this world. The world was going this. Whenever the world say, hey, this is good. That's where we go. This feels good. This is, that's where we went. Okay? According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh. This is who we were before. Whatever we felt good, we did. Amen. Anybody of you identifying with that? Okay, we didn't care because we didn't have a knower. We didn't have a way to discern things because we were dead. We didn't care if we heard God or not because we were dead inside. Right? We didn't care if we cussed. We didn't care if we left our families. We didn't care if we had bad thoughts. We didn't care if we watched pornography. We didn't care because for us it was okay because we were dead inside. Okay? Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. We were objects of God's wrath. You know, if there's a big shotgun or a big cannon that is the, and and the and the the bullet is is called wrath. It was aimed at me. I was the object. I was the target of God's wrath. Okay just as the others. But here's the good news. This is what happened to us. Are you, are you ready to hear this? Yeah. But God, say that with me, but God, yeah. who is rich in mercy, yeah. God who is rich in mercy because of His great love in which He loved us. Even when we were dead in our sins, even when we were dead in our trespasses, even when we, were, when we didn't care, about what we are hurting him or what we were doing, we didn't care. Even if we didn't know that we were doing wrong, he made us alive together with Christ. He made us alive. From being dead, he made us alive. Okay? By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together. Okay? When we got saved, we were made alive. Okay? We were dead in the first place because of Adam and Eve. Sin came, we got separated from God, we're dead spiritually. But when we got saved, being saved means you have received Jesus in your heart, you invited Him, and you received that life. Okay? It doesn't mean you started going to River of Life, you're saved. Or it doesn't mean that you're going to small group, you're saved. Okay? I think the point of being saved happens when something in you becomes awake. Amen. Can I say that again? Yeah. The point of being saved happens when in something inside of you becomes awake. Okay, we're going to know about that more. He raised us up together, made us sit together in the heaven places in Christ Jesus. He not only brought us back to life, but He sat us together in the same position as Jesus in heavenly places. Okay? Reason. What does that mean when, when He raised us up? We all know that during Easter, we talk about resurrection. Amen? Yeah. And uh, the devil is happy because we only talk about resurrection and celebrate resurrection and Easter on one Sunday during the year. Okay? But we have to live resurrection, the power of it, every day of our lives. Because to be raised, to be risen, when you get saved, you're awakened from the inside. This is what happens. Okay? This is something great that happens, and we, this is something we have to be aware about. To be raised, to, re, to rise, is to be aroused, to be awakened from the inside, to come back to life. You know, Jesus was raised from the dead, and he came back to life. And Alan, he was dead for 16 years. He met Jesus, and then he came back to life spiritually on April 6, 1986. Okay? To be awakened spiritually. 
to come to your faculties. Faculties means your senses, spiritual senses. Okay? You come to a full knowing of what's going on. Amen. So many times people get saved and they think that what just happened? What, 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 what just happened? And because we don't have a full knowing of what's going on, we don't know what happened, we think that all that happened was I got forgiven of my sins and that's the end of it. That's part of it. Amen. Yeah. All the things sometimes that happen is I'm going to heaven now and, and that's all it is. Forget, forget about how I live. Forget how my life is going to be after, that make decision, after I make that decision because that, that's all there is. No. He brings us to a point where we become awake to our senses. What does that mean? You become aware. You become sensing, whereas before you didn't care, but now your heart is more responsive. Amen. Are you thinking about brisket right now, or are you nibbling the, 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 the words that you hear? Brisket or bread? Okay. Why are we talking about this this morning? I believe that when you and I come to a place where we realize that we are awakened people, we are enlightened people, we will live differently. We will see Jesus, we will live our Christian lives differently. We will go to church on Sunday morning, yet we will have a different attitude towards going to church. Amen. We will serve God, yet the way we serve God is going to be different because we are awakened to the real purpose of why we're serving God. Amen. If we are not aware of that, everything is just program. Everything is just, oh, I'm here. I'm here because I have to be here. You know, I'm here because my family goes here. I don't want to be alone at the house. I want to go, especially if they're going to have lunch afterwards. I want to be a part of that. Amen? There is so... Something happens in the life of a person who knows Jesus when he becomes aware, when he becomes fully aware of what has happened to him, why it happened to him, and who did it to him. Amen? That is the reason why we go to church, I guess. That is the reason why we have discipleship. Because you will not know it all in one day. It's a process. I have been saved since 1986, and I am learning and discovering things about Jesus, about His Word, up to now. One good thing that I can tell you is in the last days, God is accelerating things. That what I took, that what it took me 32 years to know, you will know in two years, probably, depending on how 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 passionate you are to apply your, your heart towards, towards God. Amen? To be raised, to come into full knowing. When you're somebody, you know, when you receive Jesus in your heart, you become a Christian. You not only become a Christian, you become an enlightened one. You become an awakened one. So that when we go through life, we're not going sleepwalking. We're not going through life sleepwalking. I don't know where I'm going right now. I don't know. What, you know, the wind blows over here and that's where you go. But no, you're awakened. You know your purpose. You know what you are called to do. You know who you are called to follow. If I'm going to tell you something profound, profound, <laughs> if I'm going to tell you something Okay, this is something that uh, you can take with you. If this is going to be the last time you're going to church, or if this is going to be the last day you're going to church, this is something that you can take with you for the rest of your life. Okay, if you know who you are, if you know who you are in Christ, if you know what Christ has done for you, 
And if you know, know meaning know by heart, not know by mind. Oh, I know that because I heard it. Oh, I know that because I read it in the book. If you know, if, if you become fully awakened to the truth, who Jesus is in your life, what he has done for you, and what he has called you, and you take that with you, treasure that, man, that the world can end and you will, you will stand. Amen? You will stand with, you can stand with that. You can live victoriously with that. Okay? <clears throat> is that it? Okay. It says in, uh, okay. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Okay? You know what? The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead was the same spirit that we received and raised us back to life. Okay? And that's the part that you're supposed to say, yes! Wow. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes we have to... Th to we have to hear things repeatedly before it starts clicking, okay? Probably you've heard that five, six times, maybe on the eighth time, you're going to awaken and get trem trembling. Uh, you're going to tremble, okay? That's why we have to keep going to church. We have to keep on hearing and hearing the Word of God. You never know. For the eighth or the ninth time that you hear it, that's when it becomes real to you. Amen? That's when you start embracing it and it becomes a part of you all right in the bible it talks about being awakened spiritually who among you are awakened when you got saved you got awakened spiritually okay some of you are maybe just shy right so you're not raising your hands but when you receive jesus when you are cleansed by the blood when you receive that forgiveness Sin has been dealt with in your life and your spirit come back to, comes back to life so that now you are able to respond to God. Amen. You are able to respond. When you do something or you say something bad, you feel different. You know why? Because something in here became alive. Yeah? You, before, you didn't care. Right? I got saved when I was 16 years old. Before that, I would answer back to my mom. I would cuss. I would steal from my dad's pocket and buy candy or whatever. And it didn't bother me. All that mattered to me was candy was good. And I had to have candy. But when I got saved, something awakened within me. So that when I did that again, <laughs> I did it again after I got saved. I took the money from my dust pack. It didn't feel right. Yeah. Something got awakened. Yeah. Amen. Now, if I keep living after I got awakened from the darkness that we read in the first verse, first chapter, right? If I keep living that way and I ignored that something alive that's inside me, I keep ignoring it and... Uh, I keep on doing and following the course of this world or the desires of my flesh, something happens to me. Okay? This is what something happens. You don't die spiritually when you sin after you get saved, but you start sleeping. Hey, you start getting numb. Your heart starts getting desensitized. Your heart doesn't respond to the voice of the Spirit of God in your life the way you did in the beginning. Because you have allowed those things. You start slumbering. And I thought in the Bible, you know, a spiritual slumber is when you're dead in your sin. It's not. There's a difference between spiritual death, which already has been dealt with. Praise God. When we receive Jesus Christ, we have been made alive in Him. And now we can connect with Him. We can respond to Him. But now there is a danger of slipping spiritually, of missing the voice of God in our lives, 
of not having that tender heart before Him, that broken heart before Him, because we can allow things, we can do things, we can embrace things in our lives that can make our hearts hardened before the Lord. When you sleep spiritually, you don't lose salvation. Yeah, you're still saved. Yet what's going on when you sleep? You're missing the best of God for you. You are missing your potential. You're missing the, the higher calling of God in your life. To awake out of sleep, I, I, I wrote this down from different commentaries, okay? To awake out of sleep, spiritual slumber, a true and genuine Christian life is like the state of a man whose eyes are open and whose faculties are alert and vigorous. Your faculties, your senses, you know what's going on. You go through life, something happens, yet you know where you're going and you know where you're not supposed to go. You're awake. You're not confused. Your faculties, your, your sense of spiritual seeing, your sense of spiritual hearing, and your discernment is, what do you call that? It's, it's awake. It's turned on. Amen. In, when you're sleeping spiritually, there's inactivity. You know, when, you, when you're sleeping, you, I know you're familiar you, with some of you. You know, you sleep well. When you sleep well, what happens when you sleep? You don't move. There's inactivity, right? You're not aware. The house may be, <laughs> the house may be burning already and you're still sleeping, right? Um, when you're sleeping, they could, they, 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 there's noise around you, but you don't hear it. There's danger around you, and you don't, you don't, you don't know it, okay? When we're sleeping in, in the spirit, when we are slumbering in the spirit, there's inactivity. It's like you don't want to do anything. You just want to, <laughs> okay, I just want to, I just want to sit here and, um, yeah, okay, raise my hand for a few minutes. And then after that, it's like you, you're, you, you feel that laziness. Have you ever felt that? Or is it just me? I felt it. Okay? When you, you, you will come to a point in your life where you don't want to go to church. You don't want to praise God. You don't want to do anything. You don't care about living holy before the Lord. Amen? That means you are entering a spiritual slumber. Okay? And let me tell you that during that moment that you are there, God still loves you. His eyes are still on you. His hand is still upon you. And He's drawing you and, and, and turning your hurt heart back to Him. Okay? When you stay there, you miss the best of God for your life. You miss the best of God for your life. Okay? When we are asleep, asleep, Jameson and Fawcett says, it's a stupid Fatal indifference to eternal things. It's like you know which has eternal value, yet you ignore those things that have eternal value. We know that souls have eternal value, yet we don't go out there and share the word to those who are perishing. Amen? Amen? We know that living a holy life before the Lord is something that pleases Him. Um, it's something that will achieve for us, you know, um, a status in, in heaven. Yet we don't care about that. You know, those eternal things that we should invest our lives in, we don't care. Right? Because our judgment has been impaired. Okay? Being sleep spiritually is, you know, we... It, 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 to shake off slothfulness. Slothfulness is when you feel lazy. Okay? You don't want to do anything. You feel secure. How many of you have been, uh, what's your security blanket right now? Comfortable. Okay? Comfortable. We feel so comfortable. We don't want to pursue the things of God in our lives. Okay? And you know what? Why, why are we talking about this this morning? It's because God didn't call us for these things. He called us to be alert, to be awake, to be alive. Amen. He made us awake. He made us alive. Because you know what? When you are operating in your full spiritual faculties, there's awareness inside you. This is what happened. Okay? 
you know what happened. I know what happened to me. What happened to you? I got saved. I got forgiven. I did a lot of terrible things, but I know what happened to me. I'm awakened to what the truth that what, what happened to me. I've been forgiven. I'm awakened to the truth that I have been forgiven. I'm awakened to the truth that I am set free from sin. I'm awakened to the truth that no matter what I do, God's love for me is not going to change. I know what happened to me. I was lost. I was the object of God's wrath before, but now I am an object of His love and of His mercy. Amen. I know what happened to me. When you know what happened to you, you will be one of the people here at the front rejoicing and praising God because you knew what you are redeemed and bought from. Amen. For some, you know, uh, being aware and being awakened is something that happens rapidly. Like Paul, he met Jesus, he repented, he gave his life to Jesus, and the next thing that he does, he became a missionary. Yeah. Amen? For those people who have that, and probably you know those people, some people in, the, in, in, in your life, you know about those who met, they just met the Lord, but now they're doing, suddenly the next day they're doing great things. The next month they became missionaries. God has a special plan for those people. And God bless them. I wish that would happen to me. But if that doesn't happen to us, it's okay. Because for some, for most, it's a process. The awakening is a process. Amen. And even it's a process, process takes time. And time takes patience. So when we go through the process, don't leave. Don't jump ship. Stay. Stay in the process. Stay following Jesus. Amen? Stay following because in the process, something inside you gets awakened little by little. The kingdom of God gets advanced in my soul, in your soul, and we get redeemed and we get healed and we get cleansed little by little, inch by inch, feet, feet by feet until we become fully awake. Amen? We want to be, we want to come to a place where, you know, you, you, have you, have you uh, heard the word concussion? Concussion, when something hits you on the head once or repeatedly, and then you, you, you have a concussion, you wake up, and you don't remember things, you're disoriented. Amen? You're disoriented, and you know what? You don't know what happened. Sometimes you don't even know your name. Your wife's talking to you, and you ask, who are you? Because you have been concussed. You're disoriented. And sometimes you have to be reoriented to those things. Amen? Thank God for the Holy Spirit that we've been so dead for many years in our lives. We got awakened, and He is the one who reveals to us who we are. He orients us to the truth. Amen? We want to be to that place. We want to be in that place where we can say, I know what happened to me. I know what happened to me. I was a sinner. I was going to go to hell. I was sick, but Jesus came and He healed me. I know why I'm rejoicing. I know why I'm lifting my hands to the Lord. Something has to be awakened inside of me. Because when something gets awakened, there's no devil here on earth that can make you slow down in following Jesus in your life. Amen? We have to get awakened to the truth that one day we will, we will say, I know whom I belong to. I know who I belong to. I belong to Jesus. I belong to God. He made me. My identity comes from Him. It doesn't come from the world. The world will tell me I am this, but no, my identity doesn't come from there. My identity comes from who God says who I am. Amen? We are created, redeemed, born again, saved, holy, chosen generation, peculiar, Strange, weird, but wonderful, loved, prized possession. Our hearts has to embrace that truth. So that no matter what people or what the world throws at you, this is who you are. Sometimes you feel different, right? This is how I feel, so this is me. No. 
What you feel about you doesn't determine who you are. Amen. What determines who you are is what God says about you. And when we get awakened to that truth, oh my goodness. All the people in the world can say blue, but God says red, then it's red. Amen? You become fully convinced and nothing bothers you. You walk out there confidently. You know, people are talking about you. You know, because you did this, you did that, you know, and, and this happened to you, and you this, you're good for nothing. You know, your background tells you this, but you know what? Jesus erased all those. So now you can walk into your workplace. You can walk on the street. You can walk in the face of these people who are talking against you. And, you know, I know whom I belong to. I belong to a God who erased my past. Something in you gets awakened. And when something in you gets awakened, there's not letting go of that. You've been made alive. You've been cleansed. You've been redeemed. Now, occasionally, you get hit. And then you, you, you don't know where you are. You forget. That's okay. You just go back. You just go back to the Father and hear Him again telling you who you are. <laughs> who, who are in that? Who are in those periods right now where, you know, something just hit me. This happened in my life. This was said about me. And it kind of threw me off balance. And now I don't know who I am. I don't know where to position myself. And, and we go through that. Hello? Anybody who's in that program right now? It doesn't make you disqualified. But all you need to do is get back to the feet of your father and allow him to whisper to you who you are. Amen. We become aware, we become fully aware to the truth that I know who He is in my life. I know who He is. He's the one who loves me. He's the one where He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's the one who looks me with love. He's the one who sings over me. He's the one who rejoices over me. Amen. Can you imagine when you, me, a group of 280 people in this room, leaving this place this afternoon, knowing who they are, knowing who they belong to, knowing who their God is, that they are awakened to the truth, that they, they are enlightened to the truth that, you know, their past has been erased. And God is their father. Amen. Imagine what those group of people can do. Right? <clears throat> okay, let me close with this. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 to 8, You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. We belong to the light. We have been enlightened. Amen. And this verse is telling us since we belong to the light, let us not go back to sleeping. Amen. Let us not go back to, to those things that will make us numb to the voice of God in our lives or to the instruction of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. <clears throat> you may be here for the first time and you may be here for the 100th time. Either way, God has something for you this morning. In the multiple of words that you have heard, one thing that we can take home is this. There are things that when we are awakened to 
And when we are awakened to them, we're never the same people anymore. Amen. If you're here for the first time, God wants to quicken you in your spirit. He wants to release mercy. He wants to release forgiveness in your heart. He wants to quicken you and make you alive in your spirit inside here. And then you will know that when you receive Jesus, when you receive that life, you start sensing Him. You start hearing Him. Something in here becomes awakened and, and, and you start thinking differently. You start moving differently in the environment that you are in. He starts moving you into new things. And those new things that's going to move you into, they will create new, deep, and lasting things in your life. Amen. If, if you are here this morning, God has something great prepared for you. He's got forgiveness. He's got eternal life. Mercy, grace for you. Amen. Let's all rise up to our feet right now. And at this moment, we're going to give a, an opportunity for...